Welcome to Clearly. I'm Kelly. And I'm Jimmy. <laughs> Sitting right next to my husband, Jimmy. He's going to introduce <laughs> you, but you stole my thunder. That's a uh, story of my life. That's all that I do. That's true. That's all I ever do. It's true. Um, but we're glad that you're back with us. We're here uh, today. What are we talking about, Jimmy? Tell us what we're talking about. Uh, what are we talking about? We are talking about, you know, we said in the very f- first episode that what this podcast is, is dealing with complex stuff, but not just complex stuff that just comes out of the text of scripture, but that that uh, shows up in the Christian life. And so one of the things that we feel like is tricky is how to handle uh, slash think about slash navigate the spiritual disciplines. I don't even know if that's a term you operate in, but we want to explore that today. Things like Bible reading, prayer, fasting, kind of all those things. Is it legalistic to do them? Do we, is it important? How do we think about it? We're going to talk about it today. That's right. So stick around. Okay. So today we're talking about spiritual disciplines. Woohoo! So excited about it because it is an important topic. If you don't know what I mean by spiritual disciplines, I mean uh, the things, the practices in the Christian faith that have been done for centuries past to connect with God. Things like reading the Bible, praying, going to church, fasting, meditation, solitude, taking a Sabbath. There's the list. If you look up a list of what are the spiritual disciplines, you will actually find that it gets very long depending on who's defining that list. Right. So it can be very broad, but essentially we're talking about this category of spiritual practices uh, that Christians have practiced for um, thousands of years to connect with God. And uh, I think this is an important topic because um, in our modern day we at least hear more and more concerns, and, and rightly so, about legalism. We don't want to be just Christians who follow a bunch of rules and check things off boxes, right? We don't want to be like the Pharisees. And so what do we do uh, with this whole category of things? How do we think about it? So that's uh, what we're here to talk about uh, today, to just try and find some clarity on that and what does it look like and... My first question, and I'm actually going to... You punting? It. First gonna, qu- gonna, question one? I'm just going to lob it to you. <laughs> this is great. I don't have to do any work right I now. I should have prepared. Uh, right. No. Uh, my first, the first question that comes to mind with these things is, is it legalistic to make it a priority mm. to practice these things? Yeah. Uh, is, it, is it legalism to do that? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if you want to just... Yeah. I, I think... The way to answer that is to say it can be, but it doesn't have to be, and it ought not to be. So um, it can be in that you can turn anything meant for good into uh, something uh, meant for selfish gain, meant to um, uh, achieve your righteousness. So, of course... uh, the spiritual disciplines are, are a great chance to do that if you were so inclined to turn them into uh, a series of boxes to check. I mean, that was, you know, I, I feel like I've come in and out of that tension throughout my Christian life. Maybe you guys have too, of just like, um, I mean, some some days, especially early on, it was healthy and, and motivated by longing for God. Uh, but I, I had noticed over time, uh, ha- had I missed some of my rhythms and things like that, I, and you know this, mm-hmm. I would have been, I was undone by it, mm-hmm. but not because I missed God, uh, which I think would be an appropriate undoing sort of feeling, but instead because I didn't do the thing that when I do it in a day, it makes my day all better and organized and right. And I can, you know, say that I read my Bible. When it gets into that category, you are in a in a place um, where I think it can rightly be called legalism. Legalism, you know, at its core is just uh, an attempt to achieve through your efforts what has been achieved for you by Christ's efforts. Mm, that's so. Good. If that's the if that's what legalism is, then then any good endeavor, and we're called to so many of them in the Christian life, mm-hmm. uh, can be switched into that. So it it can be 
that. But uh, it doesn't have to be that, of course. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it ought not to be that because, uh, and this is something we'll probably explore, you know, further, but I think uh, um, the the disciplines exist, the word discipline throws us off, right? Mm -hmm. Because on the one hand, when my kids hear that, they're like, am I about to get a spanking? (laughs) Uh, But, you know, discipline feels so... um, formal and suit and tie and, you know, military. Uh, but what we're, what we're meaning is those habits and rhythms and rituals and practices that get me near to my favorite person. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. And if that's what it is, then the disciplines can be so rich and mm-hmm. rewarding because they're not an end in themselves. When we make them an end, mm-hmm. then they get they get lost and they get poisoned. But mm-hmm. when we make them the ship on which we are sailing to Jesus, our destination, mm-hmm. uh, all of a sudden, it's there's such a gift. Mm-hmm. I can't get to that island without a boat, and yeah. they become a boat for us. Mm-hmm. But the the goal is the island. The goal is not the is ship. Not the ship. That's right. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I think it helps me too to put it in the context of another relationship. Because what we're talking about is disciplines, practices that help us connect with the person of God. So we're talking about something relational when we talk about the spiritual disciplines at its essence, like you just said. But let's just talk for a second about marriage. Since we're a married couple talking about this, that's an easy uh, way to do that. How do we connect with each other in the way that any average married couple is going to connect with each other? Um, You're going to have dates. There's kind of the basic rhythm of conversation at the end of the day. <laughs> How are you doing? What happened to you today? You know, all, all of that. Um, you've got big moments of celebration, maybe gift giving. You've got sexual intimacy as a part of a marriage. You've got even the planning of bills and paying things and like the, we've combined life together. So we've got practical things we're doing together. All those things are ways that we stay connected, that we stay um enjoying one another, would, could you look at our marriage and say, you guys are so legalistic about your dates. You go on two a month and you talk to each other every night. That's so legalistic. It's like, maybe you could say that, but that's not what's happening. That's just the, those are the things that we do to connect with each other. Now, like you said, when it gets unhealthy is if I started to come to you and say, Hey, uh, excuse me, sweetie. I've talked to you and listened to you (laughs) every night Mm -hmm. for 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, you now owe me X, Y, Z thing. Mm -hmm. Then we were into something really unhealthy and weird, but it's, it's still that the thing was conversation and it became unhealthy because of my motivation. Yeah. Not because conversation in and of itself is bad. That's right. Um, or gift giving, right? If I was like, I gave you a gift every anniversary and every birthday, therefore X, or this is, or I used that to maybe brag to my friends about how awesome of a wife I was. Look at how great of a wife I am. I do all these things for my husband. And sometimes we use the spiritual disciplines to do that as believers. Mm -hmm. We, We do Bible reading, we do prayer, we do these things, partly out of a comparative, I want to be the best Christian in the room. And that's also unhealthy. It would be like me doing things for my husband that it, that really are just for me to brag to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And that would make him, that would make you feel used mm-hmm. because it, I've lost the essence of these things are meant to make us feel connected to one another. Well, yeah, it, what it does is it, again, it turns the spotlight onto the boat, not the island. That's right. It says, look at this boat, look at the, th- you know, look how fast I'm going, I'm rowing, you know. And it's like, no, that is je- it is a means to an end. That's right. Uh, they're wonderful means, they're helpful, but they're mm-hmm. a means. Um, yeah. One of my, uh, if you guys never heard of Richard Foster, he wrote uh, kind of a classic on this topic called The Celebration of Discipline. And it's a, a great book. I've got a copy of it right here if you're... Look at that. Just, it, she wasn't even planning that. It was just sitting there. Just sitting there. And the Lord said, there's, hold this up. There's probably that's a cooler true. cover uh, nowadays, but I actually like I don't know. This I one. think that's dope. That feels like something that Jackie Hillberry would put out. And we'd all be like, oh my gosh, she's so original. She's so cool with her cool artsy cover. Um <laughs> But he, I actually looked up a couple of quotes from this book uh, because I just love 
his spirit is the same in talking about these things. So um, he says, the disciplines allow us to place ourselves before God so that he can transform us. By themselves, the spiritual disciplines can do nothing. They can only get us to the place where something can be done. They are means of grace. Now he's talking more about the context of can Bible reading, can prayer, can fasting, can it transform us? Um, So we're talking about connecting with a person, but there's this other layer too of we tend to look to the spiritual disciplines to be transformative, but ultimately they're not in and of themselves. Um, They are just like you said, the ship that get us to God. These are the ways that Christians for centuries past have connected with the living God. We cannot see him with our eyes. We cannot hear him with our ears, but he is real. He is alive. Um, We do not serve a dead God. We serve a living God, one that we can know and know as a friend and know intimately. How do we do that? These are the ways that we do it. We read our Bibles. We pray. We go to church. We meet with other believers. We fast. We we rest. You know, there's, there's layers and layers up to that, but those are maybe some of the basics. And as we do that, we do it as a means to get to that island of, I need to get to God. I long for him, not just to know him, but he's my only hope for any help that I need. Mm -hmm. It's not Bible reading that can help me. It's not prayer as a thing that I do that can help me. It's the person that I'm talking to, to get to. And so I I love uh, his heart behind that, that yeah. Look at the disciplines just for themselves, and they can't they can't help you. Um, but if you're looking to God in those things, um, it'll be uh, it will function as it is intended to do. And we talked about this. Um, if you're in the Book of Malachi with us, we talked about this in Malachi as a difference between you know is it legalistic to we talked about the question of um, are we giving God our leftovers and our time? You know our our if we were to look at our lives and our actions, what would it say about how valuable God is to us? Do we spend time with him? How much time? Is it even, do we even care to do that? Is it legalistic to ask that question? I don't think it is. Um, Because uh, if I had a friend that I never called, I never texted, I never said happy birthday on their birthday. um, I every now and then greeted them, you know, and you would ask them, does Kelly care about you? They'd probably be like, no, (laughs) she doesn't (laughs) because it's not showing up in actions. Um, Is it legalistic for me to make those things a priority to somebody who is my friend? No, it's, that's how I show them that I care. And I think the same is true for the Lord. Um, I think that we can tend to err too far on this side of Jesus has covered me I have been covered by grace, right? We know that there's nothing we can do to earn his favor. And so sometimes we can just sink into this place of, it doesn't really matter at all how I treat him and how I act. Um, You know, if I don't spend time with him, I'm fine because we are covered by the blood of Christ. But God is still a person (laughs) that we should hope that we care about enough to value with our time and um, our effort and our energy. That's right to put in a place of priority in our life. That's right. And uh, I think that, you know, it's just, uh, uh, it's not how the Bible, the the Bible doesn't talk like that either. It doesn't talk like, yeah, you you get on God's team and and it's just, you just coast up the mountainside. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's just no such thing as coasting north. You just don't do that, you know? Uh, I I thought of... um, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, where, where Paul is kind of given the analogy of like doing all things for the sake of the gospel. Um, but I think there's some overlap here with just any sort of, of the disciplines that we walk in as Christians. You know, in verse 26, he says, therefore I run in such a way as not without aim, I box in such a way as not beating the air, verse 27, but I discipline my body and I make it my slave so that after having preached to others, I myself might not be disqualified. Now, he's not talking specifically about spiritual disciplines there, but there is it's just a, it's a, just a great little window into how Paul thinks about the Christian life. There's grit, mm-hmm. there's sweat, there's boxing. I mean, he's so fond of using like athletic analogies, um, and it, he's saying it takes deliberate it takes deliberate effort. Mm-hmm. And uh, I yeah, I think there's something that uh, uh, there there have been eras of Christianity where we've been on the other side of the pendulum, mm-hmm. you know, uh, as sort of like. 
Christendom and we've been way too rigid. And I think we're in that space now where we've kind of swung back the other way and we're going, man, let's just, you know, and that was my kind of hippie voice. I'm like, <laughs> hey, bro. I don't know what that voice was. But, uh, right. but the Bible didn't have space really for either of that. No. You know, there's, there's, the, there's another way. There's and, error on And both it's sides, grace-filled yeah. grit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that part of that is the time in, that we live in, the, the culture that we live in. We're in, we're in the, the quick fix, right? Give me my answer now. Give me a quick fix now. Um, tell me the shortest distance there, microwave it, whatever. And all of these disciplines, and we're going to talk about them, but it, all of these disciplines take time. There's just no way around that. They take time. <laughs> and that's the one thing we don't want to give. We don't want to give our time. Um, and sometimes people will come to me, and I, I know, Jimmy, you get these questions too, but it's like, I mean, I want to know God like you know God. Or... I really want transformation in this area of my life. I really want to see God, you know, speak to me. Or I, I, there's these desires for God, but then when the answer that I give is something that's very time intensive, which might be like, "Hey, pick up your Bible every day and read it every day," or very basic like that. It's, <laughs> it's not like, cool either. Right. It's yeah. It's not like this cool like. Well, what what book should I read? I mean, like recently I did a Q and A on uh, Instagram about. Just Bible tips. And somebody was like, what's your, what is the best Bible resource that you know of out there? And I remember thinking about it. I was like, gosh, I think that question is, it was a genuine question, but out of a spirit of like, give me the best like thing that I can get the most out of it. And my response was time. <laughs> time is the, nothing can replace just time spent in your Bible. If I could convince somebody to spend an hour a day in their Bible, even if they didn't fully understand everything they were reading, like I'm just going to read it every day. Gosh, that would be so much more, um, that would transform you so much more than if I gave you the best, like, little uh, help on how to understand the Bible book. That That's not going to help you nearly as much as just time spent in the Bible, that's time good. spent talking to him. And that's the one thing we don't want to give him is time. And we also don't want to give him, like you said, the basics. We want the cool, new, fangled, whatever it is, get us there quick and get us there fast. And there's just no quick way to it. Mm -hmm. uh, transformation and knowing God takes time. It's not, it's not, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Sexy? Yeah. It, it's, it's just not anything that's flashy and cool. It's, it, it takes effort to turn your phone off and put it somewhere else and read something that doesn't feel very life-changing. You're like, well, I read that chapter. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm going to talk to God, but that doesn't quite feel like it's transforming me or like he can hear me yet, but I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to not skip church on Sundays and I'm going to show up, but I don't really love my church right now, but I'm going to go. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to, you know, like all of these things just don't feel very impressive. Mm -hmm. They don't. Yep. But that's the one thing I feel like if I could convince people to give their lives to these things as an effort to be the ship to get them to Christ, that I think your life, you, you would, in a year, in two years, in three years, God, you would be speaking of him to others as a friend and not as an idea anymore. Ooh. You really would know him. Ooh, did you hear that? Oh my gosh. Somebody tweet that. Oh, okay. This is why I don't do stuff with you. That's this is why I'm a, I'm a, I'm your cheerleader. I'm oh a 12th gosh. man, girl. They don't know that reference. That's an uh, Aggie reference. That's kind of uh, the heart behind spiritual disciplines. Is this is about it's about a person. Uh, this is not about uh, a checklist. This is not. This is how we connect with God. So the question is the question behind the spiritual disciplines is how bad do you want to know him? I think that's the question. Uh, and if you don't want to know him very badly, that's okay to admit. I think it's really healthy to get to be able to be at a place and say, I, I just have no desire for God in my heart right now. That's just honestly where I'm at. Please say that out loud to yeah. someone else and say that to God. Yeah. <laughs> say, I'm sorry, Lord, this is just where I'm at right now. And then ask him to change that in you. Ask him for hunger. Ask him for a desperate desire for him because only he produces that. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And I think uh, getting honest about where you're, 
really at is important, and asking God for grace is really important. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the one thing I would add to that is um, asking God uh, for grace does not preclude you from then busting your tail after that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll I'll give you an example from my own life. So um, I was doing, this was years ago, I, I was taking a group of guys through First Timothy, and I came across, I don't even have it in my brain right now, but it was talking about like uh, uh, praying for all men everywhere, you, you know, those uh, in uh, leadership and all, all of that. And uh, I was just uh, feeling increasingly convicted as I was reading that of just what my prayer life looked like. It was present. It, it's just the discipline of it, the longevity of it, like uh, it, it, it just wasn't what I wanted. And so I, um, I told my guys, like, I, I just want to step into like a more committed, prolonged rhythm of praying. And, and the way that looked for me was I was going to, I pray every day, obviously, and I'm in the word and those types of things. But like, I want, at that point, I was saying an, an hour a day uh, on top of what I'm already uh, doing, an hour a, a day once a week. So on a Tuesday for me is when it was, where I am just in my prayer closet, just with the Lord, um, talking to Him. I set a timer, do that whole thing. And, you know, it was definitely a duty decision to do that. I wanted, I wanted more intimacy with God. I asked Him for grace. Uh, but then I remember just taking that sort of decisive move of going, hold me accountable to this. I'm, I'm going to be doing this, you know, once a week. And, uh, and I started walking in it and it was every time it was hard, every time for the first 15 minutes, it was like, is this 15 minutes or is this 14 years? I'm not (laughs) sure what is happening right now, but once every time, Mm -hmm. once I got over that hump of, uh, just whatever the, my Western American Instagram brain, you know, (laughs) was getting used to. That is a thing. Uh, yeah, it it was amazing, mm. and it began began for me a habit of just like learning the to exercise that muscle, prolong times of prayer with God. So much intimacy was produced in that time, mm-hmm. but it didn't just come because I asked Him for it. You have to ask Him for it, mm-hmm. but then you have to make a plan. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that the, just the both end of that; those are not um, those are not mutually exclusive things. Asking God for grace and then grinding hard. Uh, those go together. God ordains the ends and he ordains the means. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's the means of you getting nearer to him, uh, which he will accomplish infallibly because he preserves his people. But the means that he, he gets us to more depth, to uh, more maturity, to sanctification mm-hmm. is me waking up, feeling really tired and getting yeah. at it. All right. Well, that was the episode. Thanks for tuning in. Hope that was helpful for you. Kelly, what do we got? And remember, we do these in front of a live audience. So if that's something you're interested in, go to our Patreon, patreon.com, and search for Jimmy and Kelly Needham. And you have a way to become a live live audience member for these episodes as well. And next time, we are taking that live audience back into the same topic of the spiritual disciplines. And we're going to get a little more granular, a little more practical on what this actually looks like to walk out. That's right. So join us next time for that. That's right. Bye.